Twelve years ago, during the early summer, my daughter was just six years old, and she had always been terrified of thunderstorms. On this particular night, a storm had been brewing for hours before her bedtime, and we knew it wouldn't be a peaceful night. Despite her fear of thunderstorms, we decided not to change her bedtime or sleeping arrangement due to the storm. We believed it was important for her to learn to overcome her fear and not grow up being scared of storms. I stayed with her for a while, trying to comfort her and reassure her that nothing bad would happen. However, we expected her to eventually fall asleep on her own, rather than seeking refuge in our bed. The storm, as it turned out, wasn't even as severe as some we'd experienced in the past, so I didn't anticipate it being a significant issue. My husband and I were preparing for bed about an hour and a half after I had left our daughter's room, assuming she was sound asleep. Suddenly, there was a brilliant flash of lightning followed by a deafening clap of thunder that startled both of us. I can still vividly recall that moment over a decade later. After the second flash, we heard our daughter crying out for us. She must have been asleep, awakened by the first thunder and terrified by the second. I started to make my way to her room, but my husband insisted on going to check on her. He left the room, and I noticed he was gone for an extended period. I finished getting ready for bed, and even climbed into bed before he returned. When I asked what took him so long, he told me that our daughter had been genuinely frightened. She had been asleep, but, during the second flash of lightning, thought she had seen someone standing outside her bedroom window. That's what caused her to scream. My husband had to calm her down, and then check outside to ensure there was no one there. He didn't find anyone and believed she had likely dreamt it due to waking up so suddenly. He managed to reassure her and get her back to sleep, for which I was grateful. However, about fifteen minutes later, we heard her screaming again. My husband offered to check on her once more, even though I wanted to do it myself. He was a big and strong man, and if there was someone outside the house, he would be better equipped to handle it. This time he was gone for an even longer period, which heightened my anxiety. I now knew why she had screamed the first time and I worried about what might be happening that I couldn't see. After about twenty minutes, my husband returned with our daughter. She had once again believed she saw someone outside her window. Despite my husband's thorough search that yielded no intruders, our daughter was so terrified that we decided it was best for her to sleep in our bed. At this point, I didn't know what she had seen or thought she had seen, but it had obviously shaken her to the core. We all climbed into bed together and, surprisingly, fell asleep rather quickly which was a relief. However, an hour later we were all jolted awake, not by thunder or lightning, but by sirens and flashing lights. I stayed in the room with my daughter while my husband went to investigate. He was gone longer this time, and I turned on the television in our room to distract our daughter from the unsettling events. When my husband returned and shared what had happened, it sent chills down my spine in several ways. There had indeed been a man outside, and he had broken into our neighbor's house. Fortunately, our neighbors weren't home, but they had a silent alarm system that had summoned the police. Although we couldn't be certain, it seemed highly likely that our daughter had spotted the intruder outside her window. Without her alerting us twice, who knows if he would have broken in or not. It was a terrifying and eye-opening experience that brought us even closer as a family. This is a short but eerie story that happened to me in my first apartment shortly after graduating from college. It was a cozy little efficiency apartment in Chicago, located on the fifth floor of a building in Lincoln Park near the lake. Despite its prime location, I was surprised that it was within my budget. This took place around 2001, and I had been living in the apartment for almost a year at the time. On this particular late spring night, I had decided to stay in instead of going to the clubs, mainly because bad storms were forecasted, and I didn't fancy getting caught in the rain. Back then, ale was still a thing, which feels somewhat nostalgic now. It makes me wonder if it still exists in some form today. I was spending my evening browsing chat rooms when I heard my cat meowing. Her meows were usually a clear indicator that she was out of food, so I got up to feed her, a routine I was well accustomed to. As I walked towards her bowl, a sudden and massive flash of lightning illuminated the room. 
Moments later, a deafening clap of thunder followed, nearly shaking the entire building. It was quickly followed by torrential rain, the sound of it drumming loudly on the windows. After feeding my cat, I returned to my computer to continue chatting online with someone. The storm outside had intensified, with lightning and thunder striking almost simultaneously, creating a dazzling light show. The wind was howling loudly too. While engrossed in my online conversation, a lightning flash was immediately followed by an intense orange glow and what sounded like an explosion from the street below. I jumped in surprise, not only from the sound but also because the power had gone out, plunging my apartment into complete darkness. There was no ambient city light filtering in, and even my desktop computer had gone silent. Realizing the power outage might last a while, I retrieved my cell phone. However, this was a time before smartphones, and its DM Green LCD screen provided little illumination. It was going to be a long, dark wait. About half an hour passed when I heard my cat meowing again. This was odd because I had just filled her food bowl, and there was no way she could have finished it all. I walked over to her bowl in the dark, confirmed there was still plenty of food, and began to wonder what was causing her distress. I could make out her form faintly in the dark. She was on the kitchen counter, meowing and transitioning into a low growl and hiss. My typically docile cat rarely displayed such behavior, so I grew increasingly concerned, wondering if a rodent had found its way inside. Then, in front of her, I noticed a shape, but it was difficult to discern. It seemed like a dark figure, and I initially thought my eyes were playing tricks on me in the dark. As I strained to see it better, the lights abruptly came back on. My cat was still on the counter growling, and there was a strange, indistinct figure in front of her. It had some form, but it wasn't entirely clear, and I had no idea what it was or where it had come from. My legs gave way and I involuntarily sat down on the bed, the apartment being one room, in utter shock. But just as suddenly as it had appeared, the figure vanished. My cat jumped off the counter, darted over to me, and hopped into my lap. She immediately began to purr as I petted her, both of us bewildered by the inexplicable encounter. I never found out what it was or where it came from, and I never witnessed it again, despite living in that small apartment for another year. Furthermore, I never heard my cat growl like that before or since. Her strange reaction made it clear that she had also seen whatever it was, turning a seemingly ordinary night into an eerie and unexplained experience. I once had an experience that felt like it came right out of a horror movie. It occurred during my summer vacation from school, and I woke up to an unusually dark and overcast day. Despite the hot summer we'd been having, I was thrilled to see the sky covered in ominous green and black clouds, which promised the kind of weather I enjoyed most. I was always on the lookout for adventures and unique experiences, especially those with a bit of a scare factor. On that day, I decided to explore an old abandoned building located just outside my neighborhood. It had been deserted for as long as I could remember, and although many high school kids used it as a spot to get high, I had never ventured inside. I was seeking an atmospheric experience, and I thought that an abandoned, boarded-up building during a thunderstorm would provide just that. Plus, I secretly hoped to stumble upon some hidden treasures, like a stash of pot or something similar left behind by other explorers. Without much concern about getting caught in the impending storm, I set out towards the old building. The rain hadn't started yet, and somehow, I had a feeling it wouldn't begin until I had reached my destination. You can sometimes sense when a storm is on the horizon. The building was surrounded by overgrown vegetation, with no road or trail leading to it. To reach it, you had to make your way through a small forest. I wish I could provide a more vivid description of that day, but it's challenging to convey the atmosphere. Gaining entry to the building was relatively easy, especially since it was daytime, and I didn't anticipate encountering anyone inside. Inside, the darkness and shadows added an eerie touch. The walls and floors were covered in graffiti and riddings, and empty beer cans and bottles, along with other litter, littered the place. 
As I explored, the storm intensified outside, with continuous thunderbolts creating a dazzling display. It wasn't long before I heard the heavy rain begin to pour. Unfortunately, my search for hidden treasures proved fruitless. Disappointed but still intrigued by the atmosphere, I continued exploring. I decided to head down to the basement, but each staircase was sealed off with locked doors. To access them, I had to navigate my way through thick doors. As I reached for the door handle to open one of the doors, something caught my eye through the small window in the door. There was someone on one of the staircases, ascending the steps. I immediately let go of the door handle. I wasn't sure what to expect. It could have been another teenager like me exploring the building, but in that moment, I didn't want to take any chances. Swiftly, I ran across the hallway and into a room directly across from the staircase. I closed the door without latching it, leaving a small gap for me to peek through. I managed to get inside the room quickly before the person reached the top of the stairs. After a short time, I saw a figure appear in the window. It seemed to take him longer than it should have to get there. When he finally opened the door, I realized he was pulling something along with him. It was only when he heaved it onto his shoulder that I recognized it as a body bag. Terrified, I managed to stifle any noise I might have made. While I had initially sought adventure that day, this was not what I had in mind. A loud clap of thunder nearly gave me away, but I held my breath. The man was pulling the bag with him, and it appeared as though he was struggling. I had no idea what was inside the bag or where he was headed. So, I stayed still and waited. The storm raged on, and I kept checking my watch, growing anxious during the prolonged silence. Eventually, I realized I couldn't stay in that room indefinitely. With trepidation, I crept out of the room. There was no one in the hallway that I could see. I tiptoed to the stairwell, and there was no sign of the man. It was at this point that I contemplated going down to the basement to investigate further. I had my hand on the handle, but something inside me hesitated. I had seen too many horror movies where someone makes a foolish decision, and I didn't want to become that character. After all, entering the building itself was adventurous enough. I opted to leave instead. I exited the forested area, not caring that I quickly became soaked from the rain. My main concern was avoiding the mysterious man, whom I feared might discover me. I eventually made it home while the storm still raged. I anonymously reported what I had seen to the police, though I wasn't sure if they took it seriously or dismissed it as a prank. The building continued to serve as a hangout for those looking to get drunk or high, but I never returned. To this day, I have no idea what I witnessed that day, and I have never forgotten the eerie encounter in that abandoned building.